Okay, yeah, welcome back to yet another video. In today's video, it's gonna be something similar to a part two of my previous video in which I said type of vehicle in Unreal Engine. And in today's video, I'll just be going over some of the things I didn't go over in that video. So with that said, let's get into this. Uh, if you go to the vehicle blueprint, then you go down to the vehicle management component. If you scroll down from the top and you come down, you'll find a section that says steering setup. Over here, you will pretty much just determine your car's steering type. You have three options. You have single angle, which will make it so that the front wheels turn at a single angle. Then the angle ratio will make it so that the outside wheel will turn less than the inside wheel. So the inside wheel will turn more. And then the outside one will turn at an angle that you specify at the angle ratio. So here it's set to 0.7. So whatever the inside one is, the outside one will only be at 0.7 of what the inside one is. And then the last one is the Ackerman. That is a principle similar to single to the single ratio. It also pretty much just determines that the inside wheel will turn more than the outside one but with this one you don't actually determine the ratio yourself it follows the principle of the Ackermann setup the Ackermann geometry setup so that is from it and then below that we have the steering curve if you open this you will, will find a graph this graph uh, determines how much steering angle your car has at what speed so it will pretty much behave as it will pretty much make your car behave as though it's a real car that the faster you go the less steering angle your car has you can adjust this which is if you right click and hold and you can move it around you can select it and then change the type you have different types you can also delete it simply right clicking on and pressing on delete and then you can add by left clicking and then adding key to none and then you can adjust it as you see fit. The horizontal is your car's speed in kilometers and then the vertical is the percentage that your car has. If you want to know the theoretical speed that your car can go based on its gear ratios, then you can head over to this website. I will leave a link to it in the description. You here, you come and you will select the amount of gear the car has, you put in the four gear ratios, you put in your car's tire diameter, this should be in millimeters, and then your final driver ratio as well, and then as well as your vehicle's shift point. And then you have two options, you can either shift and trace, which will animate the needles, or you can simply just trace it and then it will show you where everything happens and will give you the final speed in your specified outcome either in kilometers or you can change it to miles per hour as well and you also want to make sure that your vehicle diameter does match your actual vehicle because the vehicle diameter can affect your vehicle's top speed see here the vehicle's information the entire information is down here if you set it to its default of 775 and then as you can see the top speed has gone up i'll leave a link to this you can play around with it and set up with your code and i wait and then if you go a little bit more down from the steering setup you will have a, another option here that says enable center of mass override this will override the default center of mass that Unreal has assigned to your car uh if you use the add-on from blender this is pure speculation i'm not 100 sure this is actually true but you know where your lip bone is is where the uh and will recognize your vehicle center of mass that is just from my speculation from playing around with the settings over here i'll show you how what what happens when you change it and you can see from the vehicle the vehicle is a bit it has a high center of mass that's why it moves around as it does but if I go back in here and then I enable it and then I change the Z to something like negative 50, then as you can see, the vehicle no longer wobbles as much as it did before. That is something to take note of as well. And just disable that again because I'm going to be showing how some of the other things work. And that will pretty much be everything for here. And then when I go over to the tire setup, in the tire setup over here we covered some of these the wheel mass 
is something new to Unreal. It wasn't here before, before 5.2. This is in kilograms. It pretty much just uh, tells Unreal how much the wheels weigh of the vehicle. And then the corner stiffness will determine how tight your car sits through corners. By default, it sits to 1000. And then by the friction force multiplier, Unreal has a default friction force, and then this will simply just multiply it by that number. And then we have the side slip modifier. This will modify, this will amplify the side slip factor as well. The higher the number, the more the more resistance will be there. But then if you lower it, you just throw it by the back wheel instead. Should be a lot more interesting to that. As you can see, the vehicle is not behaving because the car is just slipping all over the place because basically it doesn't have any kind of traction in the back wheels. Let me just put that back. One, then we have the slip threshold and the skid threshold. This will simply determine how much force your car can take before it loses control. Slip is forward momentum, skid is sideways momentum. And then a new, other, another new feature that Unreal has added to 5.2 is the max wheel spin rotation. That will, that will make it so that your vehicle, when it pulls away, has a certain amount of slip so the vehicles can rotate freely before it stops and then your car will go forward. Let me just show an example of this. As you can see, if I go a little bit backwards and then I go forward again, you can see the slip on the front wheels and rear wheels. You know, the wheels will rotate a certain amount of radian before it stops and then hooks up and then your car will be propelled forward again. And if we come down here, we have the suspension set up. The suspension axis is the local body direction in which where suspension forces are applied. So this will determine which way your suspension moves Say for instance, if your vehicle no longer touches the ground, so negative one will make it so that your wheels drop. And then in the suspension offset, force offset, I don't know what that does. I always leave it as is. I've never played with it. I don't mind to play with it. My suspension works fine. If you feel like you want to try it out and experiment, you're free to do so. The suspension max raise is how far the wheel can go above the resting position. And then we have the suspension max drop, which is how far the wheel can drop below the resting position. Let's see what this does. We'll put it 50. Okay, so the wheels have dropped a lot. A lot. Okay, so that's why that's why it, it, it lowered the wheels from its resting position. And then the suspension dampening ratio, suspension dampening larger causes the suspension pump to rest faster. So it will make your car behave a little bit differently depending on its ratio. Let's put this at zero and see what happens. And you're gonna see the car is a little bit, and then you're gonna turn this up to one. cause a little bit less bumpy and then the wheel load ratio and at zero wheel friction is completely independent of floating wheel at one wheel rate based on the force pressing wheel into the ground oh. so what is that car seems to be acting a little bit below in the shop must say this is really interesting i'm going to up to one and i see how it goes Okay, it seems a little bit stiffer than before. Okay, yeah, it definitely is stiffer than before. And then we have the spring rate in newton meters. Uh, let's see what this does. Something something to the 500. Oh. Cause that's stiffer three corners and bumps. It doesn't more than what I used to. So the spring ratio is pretty much just how stiff the shocks are through things like bumps and jumps, how rigid it is. And then the spring preload, I think it would be the amount of force on the spring if it's just left alone. 
by default. And then suspension smoothening. And this will smooth out the bumps when your car goes over bumps, does jumps, lands on the ground and stuff like that. By default, it's set to zero, so there's zero smoothening. It, 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 it's purely physics based, but if you crank it up, then it will smooth out as much as possible. But you have to wait if the number is too high, there is the possibility that your wheels could possibly go through the body. And then the anti roll scaling is pretty much just how your car feels to the corners. We're going to turn this up to one and see what happens. It will pretty much just be the roll of the vehicle. But the vehicle does seem to roll a lot less through the corners. But we're going to turn this down to zero one and see what happens. Oh, it cars all over the place. It's just wobbling. Yo. Oh. Wheels. Two wheels again. Look at that. Ah, look at that. Down, 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 down. Okay, okay. I got this, I got this. Oh, beautiful. And we might want to keep the roll bar scaling a little bit high if you want your car to be out here doing those kinds of things. So it's kind of fun though. And then we have the sweep shape. This is how Unreal handles your suspension calculations. Ray cars use ray to determine suspension length to ground. It's the fastest, it is the easiest to calculate because it, and it's just the being from the lowest point of your wheel being shot into the ground. And then with sphere cost, use sphere to determine suspension length to ground. So it will basically kind of create a sphere on the wheel. It, it's, not, it's a lot more intense than the previous one. And then the shape cost is the slowest so this is just so all of this the sweep type the sweep shape will pretty much just determine how intense the suspension calculations for the physics will be and then the sweep type is simple this will sweeps against simple geometry only and then sweeps against complex geometry only so it's also it will affect the calculating and how intense it will be um and we looked at the calculations for the suspension and then the max brake torque this just determines how much force is applied when you brake the vehicle. The higher it is, the faster the car will slow down, the lower it is, the longer your car will take to brake. And then the handbrake max torque is the same. And with that, that is everything covered. It wasn't covered in the previous video when it comes to setting up your vehicle. But thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, and uh, until the next video.